this YouTube series will cover material that we cover in our Introduction to Astronomy class from a meteorite found in Antarctica from the planet Mars and the search for life, all the way through to supernovas and black holes. So now that we got a sense for the different types of light, from radio down one end to gamma ray down the other, remember radio waves are long wavelength waves. So wavelength is increasing in this direction. Long wavelength radio waves down to very short wavelength gamma rays. We also know that frequency and energy increase in the opposite direction. So now that we've got a sense for what the different types of light are, of what use is this to astronomers? The first one I think is one you could probably guess right off the bat. Have you ever looked at a fire and recognized that the hottest part of the flame has a different color than the cooler part of the flame? In fact, people have probably said to you, wow, that fire is really hot. It's blue. The blue part of the flame is hotter than the orange part or perhaps the red part of the flame. Does that make any sense? I think now that we've put two and two together here and we recognize what the difference is between red and blue, we recognize that it makes total sense that there is a relationship between color or what the book refers to as peak wavelength. Right? So you say something's red or green, it has a certain peak wavelength, it has a certain color. So the different wavelengths are different colors just to use the new lingo, and we can relate that to temperature. Does it make sense that something that's hotter would put out more blue light? Absolutely. As we move to this part of the spectrum, we're getting higher and higher temperatures because we're getting higher and higher energy types of light produced as a result. So the hot fire is blue, it's producing higher energy light. Cooler is yellow, orange, red. Might you imagine there's even some infrared light coming off the fire on the edges? Absolutely. Again, there's a relationship between color and temperature. Think about it. You and I, have you ever seen a picture using a camera that can actually see heat? We call that a heat camera, right? That camera is taking a picture in infrared. You and I produce infrared light. Are we as hot as the sun that's producing visible light? Not by a long shot. We're cooler than the sun, therefore our peak wavelength is down in the infrared part of the spectrum. As I alluded to in an earlier video, cool pods of gas floating in the universe might produce microwaves or radio waves. By the same token, hot collisions between galaxies, collisions between black holes, can create bursts of x-rays and gamma exploded stars, etc. So the reality is, is that temperature can be measured using color. And it can dictate what type of telescope, what type of sensor we want to put on in order to study one phenomenon or another. So astronomy uses all the different types of the spectrum as we alluded to before, and there is a connection between color and temperature. We'll talk in a minute about what else we can learn from light. 